As free market lovers, we are frequently subjected to so-called statistics, which claim to offer proof of our impending demise. Don't look now, leftists, but these reports of our demise may be greatly exaggerated. If you're familiar with this channel, you're probably aware that I am a free market advocate, but I am not a free market purist. That is to say, if I have a choice between a politician on the left and a politician on the right, I will nearly always choose the right, even if that choice comes with uh, baggage. So it was a welcome bit of news when I realized recently that conservatives, who tend to be more capitalist, are outbreeding leftists who tend to be more socialist and doing it by a very wide margin. This was welcome news on many levels. The implications for future free market policies are obvious, but beyond that, it's encouraging to hear that the general hostility toward families in general and procreation specifically is being brushed aside by a significant portion of our population. You'd never know this if you're only paying attention to the propaganda allowed by the Censor Brothers and the Biden free press, we've probably all heard of or seen studies that claim to show that people with children are more unhappy than people without. Imagine my surprise when it turned out that most of these studies have been rigged based on a political agenda. Who would have thought? For a nice summary of why this is true, please take a look at this video from On the Other Hand. Now, On the Other Hand, is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also called Mormons by us heathens. Um, so he will probably single-handedly bump up the previously mentioned fertility statistics substantially just in the time it took me to make this video. <laughs> it makes me feel like a real slacker, but you should definitely check out his channel. He produces a lot of great material when he has the time. Speaking of which, a little over two children per conservative couple is a lot better than the approximately one and a half per leftist, but still not exactly knocking the ball out of the fertility park. So let me briefly make the case for why we should be doing better. Reason number one, leftists think it's a bad idea. I'm only partially kidding here. Other than a handful of social issues where free market advocates and leftists are in fleeting alignment, you would do pretty well to take the opposing side of any leftist argument if you want to move toward a more, rather than less, free society. This is a good example. A shrinking population is a death sentence for humans, which would be just fine for leftists, but should not be just fine with us. Reason number two, life is good. Now, most people mean when they say this, life is good for me. I mean this more generally, as in life, in the aggregate, is inherently good without qualification. And we should want more of it, not less. In the upside down world they inhabit leftists want us to think that slowly killing ourselves off is a great way to preserve life. For more detail, see reason number one. Whatever the reason, it's clear that we are living in a world where traditional social connections are more fragile and tenuous. They're being driven more and more by fleeting expedience than by deep-seated bonds and loyalty. But listen, a sister will always be a sister. A brother will always be a brother. A friend might not always be a friend. The closer you keep your family, the better. They're the only ones you can rely on. Remember this, all of you. Nothing counts so much as blood. The rest are just strangers. A blood bond is much more difficult to break or ignore. With the increasingly volatile nature of our society, blood relationships should be at a premium. You should make as many as you can afford. Reason four, if it's not difficult, it's not worth doing. How in the heck did we get to a place where the easier something is, the more desirable it is? Not many parents enjoy getting up in the middle of the night or dealing with teen angst. They do enjoy a baby's first steps, seeing their children make their own way in the world, and, and watching their grandchildren grow up in their declining years to start the cycle all over again. Does it always work out like this? No. Does anything? 
Does that mean it's not worth the effort? I'd like to close with some insight from on the other hand. I think he brings some clarity to this issue that can benefit all of us. I think children provide their parents with a much needed reality check and a mirror that helps parents continue to grow themselves and see and understand their own shortcomings, as well as provide joy and perspective on the meaning and fulfillment of life. Fundamentally, every culture, religion, nation, and even the human race is just one generation away from extinction. If adults do not have kids, or they don't pass down what they've found to be the most important and precious things in life, anything can quickly shrink out of existence. In a way, I feel like the cycle of having, teaching, and raising kids allows mankind, and every culture and group, the ability to try and distill their own life experiences and wisdom to the next generation, and allows a progression where the kids can, hopefully, learn from earlier generations and make less mistakes and continue to progress and make things better.